Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and today we're looking at the topic of VRAM. We're in a recent video where we looked at the 4070 Ti. You guys in the comments were saying 12 gigabytes of VRAM is not enough. Want to see more VRAM on video cards? And so what I decided to do in today's video, we're going to be testing four of the different latest titles that also have heavy VRAM requirements. And we're going to be testing that with AMD versus Nvidia. Now there actually is some very surprising news to me personally, and that is at 1080p lowest settings possible, four gigabytes of VRAM is out for these new titles. Meaning if you have a graphics card with four gigabytes of VRAM, or say three gigabytes of VRAM, that card's just pretty much going to come into a lot of issues with these four titles that we're showing in today's video. Also in today's video, this is like a base video for upcoming future content where we're going to be talking about different cards that are popular with their vram limits of say an rtx 3060 ti 8 gigabytes of vram and then we've got say a 6700 xt 12 gigabytes of vram we're going to see how that fares with these titles and also upcoming titles that are released in the next few months. It's something that you guys definitely wanted us to look into and hopefully today's intro video does not disappoint. But one thing we will get into first off is there's actually a difference between VRAM allocation and VRAM utilization. Now, if you guys want a separate video on VRAM all in itself and the methodology behind it, algorithms implemented to compress textures and things like that, we can look at a deep dive on that topic itself do let us know in the comment section below but for what it's worth there's essentially two types of vram stats that can be important when it comes to gaming the first is allocation the second is utilization now utilization is generally that setting of how much that graphics card is using at that point in time so this is actually the more important figure to look at when we are gaming because if you run out of this you are going to come into issues like stuttering or even textures popping in and out or even in certain cases blurry images when it comes to pc gaming and that is really an undesirable experience no one wants to buy a graphics card especially if they're spending a couple of hundred dollars on this type of scenario for it to happen so let's get on with today's comparison where we've got the rtx 4090 and also the rx 7900 xtx both have 24 gigabytes of vram plenty more than enough in these titles here today but let's get on with this comparison right after today's video sponsor Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. The first title we're pulling up here is Modern Warfare 2. Now, this is probably the most important title in today's video because they are going to be using this engine, and they've publicly stated this to developers of this game, they're going to be using this engine in upcoming Call of Duty releases too. So the VRAM requirements should be a good indicator of what's to come with future Call of Duty franchise releases. Now, comparing AMD versus NVIDIA, it looks like AMD does require slightly more VRAM allocation and utilization than the NVIDIA counterparts, where if you're lucky on an NVIDIA card, you may be able to scrape by with 1080p lower settings, just that four gigabyte limit. But this is the only example in today's video where four gigabytes was going to cut it. And even then the total allocation was above four gigabytes of VRAM, meaning you may come into some issues with a four gigabyte card on Modern Warfare 2. However, at 4K low settings on both the AMD and the Nvidia card, looks like six gigabytes of VRAM will cut it for both these architectures of graphics cards. Then when we step it up to ultra settings with the high textures here, this is where the VRAM utilization can go all the way up roughly close to around 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And on the AMD side of things, that went up to 11.9 actual utilization. Meaning that if you guys are getting a graphics card and you want to play 4K ultra settings on Modern Warfare 2, you're going to at least need 12 gigabytes of VRAM for this title. Now we're going to move on to Hogwarts Legacy. I did decide to test a few different areas just to sort of see where the VRAM utilization was the heaviest. And I managed to find this uh, spot within the Hogwarts castle where it was pretty intense on the VRAM usage. Now, one thing about this title is once you turn on ray tracing, it does get very VRAM hungry. 
to the point of roughly needing over 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So even if you have 12 gigabytes of VRAM, sometimes you are not going to be cutting it for this game. But if you are playing without ray tracing, then at least at 1080p low settings, you're going to want at least a 6 gigabyte VRAM card on both AMD and the Nvidia side of the fence. Now, if we step things up to 4K, low resolution, the game still looks really good on these settings and our VRAM utilization does go up to roughly six gigabytes on both. The total allocation is around seven gigabytes. So in other words, 4K low settings on Hogwarts Legacy, you're going to want at least an eight gigabyte VRAM card for this particular title. And then as we set things up to ultra, it starts to become roughly a 12 gigabyte affair on these particular settings. And as we said before, with ray tracing, it can get very demanding. So analyzing those first two games, it looks like six gigabytes of VRAM is the new minimum for 1080p low settings with some of these latest demanding titles. But let's move on now to the VRAM chonker. This is The Last of Us, where you guys requested, this is probably the most requested game to take a look at in terms of the VRAM requirements. And oh my goodness, was this indeed a VRAM chonker. What we saw when it came to the AMD card, allocating as much as 14 gigabytes of VRAM and then total utilization going over that of 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And then as for the Nvidia RTX 4090, that spiked up to 13.3 total allocation. And again, needing over 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So slightly less usage on the Nvidia cards, at least in the same benchmarking area that we chose to look at when it came to comparing these two graphics cards. But here's where this game at 1080p lower settings, just like Hogwarts Legacy, decided that the minimum requirements here were going to be at least six gigabytes of VRAM, where if you had under that, you are definitely going to come into problems with this title, where we saw on the Nvidia side, 5.2 and then 6.3 total allocation. And then on the AMD side, we saw 5.7 and then 6.8 total allocation. So basically the utilization here is approaching six gigabytes of VRAM at 1080p, lowest settings, 100% screen resolution. But when we go up to 4K, at least low settings, the same settings that were used at 1080p, the VRAM requirements really go up at a minimal rate here, going from the NVIDIA side, for instance, from 5.2 gigabytes utilization to 6.9, and then eight gigabytes total allocation. And then on the AMD side, it actually became a similar story with 7.3 and 8.4 in total. So basically for 4K low settings on The Last of Us, you'll want to have at least eight gigabytes of VRAM. And then as we stepped up to 4K ultra settings, as we said before, it was an absolute chonker of a deal where the graphics actually did look kind of impressive, but it does make me wonder when I look at The Last of Us and even Hogwarts, when I do look at these two titles, they're using up a lot of VRAM at 1080p compared to 4K, even at the same settings. And at least from my knowledge, at least when I used to play games back in the day, when you went from 1080p to 4K, usually the VRAM usage would like double or something like that. In this case, sometimes we're only using an extra 20, 25% VRAM going from 1080p to 4K. So it's something I want to look into a little bit deeper here to give you guys an answer as to why that's happening with these newer titles. But if I had to hazard a guess, my gut feeling would tell me that these games are actually being designed first and foremost with 4K gaming in mind, and then they're just pretty much downscaling the games to 1080p, but the assets on the VRAM utilization are still being much larger than they, I guess, would ought to be if a game was optimized truly for 1080p from the get-go versus 4K. Though, let's get on to the last title here, and this is Spider-Man's Miles Morales, where we've also got ray tracing just like Hogwarts, which we've tested out in today's video here. And this is where we saw a total utilization at 1080p lower settings, again, requiring more than four gigabytes of VRAM. So the minimum here is six gigabytes. Four gigabytes is definitely out when it comes to Spider-Man Miles Morales. On the AMD side, we needed 5.4 and then 6.5 in total allocation versus the Nvidia side of things here. We needed five utilization and then 6.2 in total allocation, making the VRAM utilization a little bit less here on the Nvidia side of things. But regardless of these statistics, you'll need at least six gigabytes of VRAM to get a smooth experience here in Spider-Man. But then when we step up to 4K low settings, and just like we critiqued The Last of Us and Hogwarts for, 
This going to 4K low settings shows us a similar trend with the VRAM. Actually, it's probably one of the closest examples I could find here on the AMD side, going from 5.4 gigabytes utilization to 6.2. So I was kind of really shocked here to see how much little extra VRAM utilization 4K low requires over 1080p low. But going over to 4K ultra was where things started to get VRAM demanding here on the AMD side, going to at least 9.5 utilization and then 10.5 in total. And then on Nvidia's side, 9.1 and 10.3 respectively. And then if we want to turn on ray tracing, it's even higher going to around 12 gigabytes on both of these cards. So basically if you are a 4K gamer with Spider-Man, you'll get away with low settings on eight gigabytes of VRAM. But then if you want to put on any of the fancy effects and settings, you're going to want to have a 12 gigabyte VRAM card. But then if you want ray tracing, you may even want some more VRAM on top of that, just so you don't come into any problems. So with all that said and done, let's go over now to a conclusion on the first video here at Tech City on the VRAM again. So after looking at those results, the biggest thing that stood out to me was that four gigabytes of VRAM is pretty much out. And that was kind of surprising. I thought four gigabytes of VRAM would have been fine for even the latest titles at 1080p, like lower settings, but it's just not happening now in 2023. At a minimum, six gigabytes of VRAM is going to be in for 1080p low settings. But what was more actually kind of surprising was the 4K low settings requirements they didn't really jump that much in VRAM utilization. So in other words, if you've got an eight gigabyte card, even on these latest titles, and you've got to say, for instance, a 1440p high refresh uh, rate monitor, you're going to be fine with eight gigabytes of VRAM getting by with either low or medium settings, just depending on the game and how VRAM strenuous it is. But eight gigabytes of VRAM is kind of going to be a minimum to have flexibility between the different uh, resolutions, but six gigabytes is going to be the absolute bare minimum you'll want to have if you don't want to come into any problems with some of these titles coming out and going forward. But the final thing to talk about here is the 1080p and also the 1440p gamers that want to turn on the high settings or the ultra settings in the effects. Are they going to have enough VRAM for that? And here's where I decided to put in a final test here with The Last of Us and turn the settings up a bit at 1080p. And I was surprised to see that just like the 4K low versus 1080p low, the same thing happened on the ultra settings. At 1080p, this game can really utilize the VRAM if it wants to, going near that of the 4K figures too, and stepping above that of the eight gigabyte requirement. Meaning if you've got a 3070 and you wanna play at 1080p, high settings or ultra settings, you're gonna come into problems getting a smooth experience with The Last of Us and say for instance, Hogwarts and Spider-Man. So another thing that I learned here today was that if you're getting a new graphics card, you'll definitely want at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM if you wanna turn on higher ultra settings, even at 1080p and have some of those fancy effects on, which at 1080p, these graphics cards should be more than capable of giving out high FPS, for, say for instance, with high settings and maybe some ray tracing turned on, etc. So 12 gigabytes looks like it's the minimum for the person who wants the latest and greatest experience, but eight gigabytes is going to be the minimum for someone who wants a smooth experience on say low or medium settings. And then six gigabytes, as we said before, is gonna be the absolute bare minimum. So it looks like 12 gigabytes of VRAM, just like you guys were saying in the comments, is going to be sort of that new minimum that you'll want to get if you wanna play some of the latest and greatest titles and you wanna have flexibility in what settings you choose. And also you don't wanna come into stuttering issues or things popping in and out of existence in that game. Then with all that aside, the final thing that I wanna talk about personally is even though I'm saying in today's video, six gigabytes is gonna be the bare minimum, it doesn't mean if you've got a four gigabyte uh, VRAM card, it's gonna be completely useless. The beauty of PC gaming is that you've got so much flexibility. There's a plethora of amazing titles out there. Even if they're a few years old, they usually come up for really cheap prices on discount uh, sales. And you can just get some of these games and really enjoy them if you haven't played them before. And your four gigabyte VRAM card is going to be amazing for those titles that aren't the latest and greatest titles coming out in 2023. What we saw here today was some of the most VRAM strenuous titles on PC. They are a small category of games, but they 
if anything, they're sort of like an indicator of what's to come in the future. But it doesn't mean that your four gigabyte VRAM card is useless and you just go chuck it in the bin. Uh, that's not what I'm saying in today's video. Four gigabyte VRAM cards, I personally could have a lot of fun on them as two of the main games that I play personally is Dota 2 and also Apex Legends. And four gigabytes of VRAM for both those games is more than enough to get a very smooth experience. And so don't be alarmed if you've got four gigabytes of VRAM. One thing I love about PC gaming is just the flexibility it brings and the choices that it brings too. Though going forward, I will be giving you guys more information on VRAM, especially going forward with relation to cards that have say eight gigabytes. I wanna test that versus 12 and give you guys a lot more testing on this topic. I actually found it really interesting doing this benchmarking and I hope you guys found this video really interesting too. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content as always, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops here at Tech Yes City. And with that aside, love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Hinata Shoyo 2999 and they say who in his right mind would buy an effing 12 VRAM card for almost a thousand dollars eight years ago 11 gigabytes of VRAM for a 1080 Ti was 799 at full price the card should be 22 gigabytes in VRAM right now lol and the comment this comment does have some truth to it I mean a 1080 Ti had 11 gigabytes of VRAM and the 1080 that we've got here had eight gigabytes of VRAM. The 1070 had eight gigabytes of VRAM. And then you've got the Force 4070 coming out years and years later with only 12 gigabytes of VRAM. I think personally, I would have liked to have seen the 4070 have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. I think the 4090 having 24 gigabytes of VRAM, same with the RX 7900 XTX, that 24 gigabytes is valid. But then when we look at the lower points in the stack, I kind of would have liked to have seen a little bit more VRAM on these cards, especially the 70 class card. I would have liked to have seen that have 16 gigabytes, just like the 4080 and also that 256 bit bus available so hopefully when it comes to amd doing their 7800 xt they give that a 16 gigabyte vram buffer i would like to see that especially with a very competitive price point but in terms of 12 gigabytes it's kind of doing the bare minimum in terms of giving you that latest experience though going back to the question i think 16 would have been better on the 70 class series cards do agree with that comment and hopefully that answers that one and we'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon Peace out for now. Bye.